All right, today I have a crank no start. It's a 2004, um, and I want to show you guys how I diagnose this truck. Um, so I, st I still see a lot of uh, stuff on, on YouTube. I've been getting a lot of messages with people that um, are having a hard time diagnosing their trucks. Um, so this is a, what I'm going to do uh, is use, um, you can use a scan gauge too um, to look at most of the critical PIDs if you, if you want to go that route. Um, that's probably the cheapest route. Or you can, um, uh, today I'm going to use Auto Ingenuity. Um, I also have Ford IDS system, but IDS isn't available for a lot of you guys and it's very expensive to get. So um, Auto Ingenuity is like the second best thing um, compared to a Snap-on scanner or something like that. So I'm going to go through a couple of codes. So we got uh, air intake temperature. That's because the, uh, uh, the intake is gone. Um, it's not on the truck, so it's got no air filter in it. Um, glow plug one, three, and seven. Well, it's a good thing that those are all on one side. Um, and then ICP control um, pressure sensor low. So this is means when it's cranking and it's over 20 seconds, if it doesn't see um, ICP pressure at 500 pounds, it'll throw the 2285 code um, so on this truck the customers told me that he put new injectors in it um, from another engine um, so let's do uh, let's go through the PIDs really quick and look at and see how things are doing so let's look at pick them voltage there's your main power let's do there's your fickum voltage so the fickum looks good there we're going to look at Ficum Sync. Next we're going to look at Injection Control Pressure. Voltage. So that's within spec. Let's look at ICP Control Pressure. And let's look at the IPR valve. So there's your regulator, so we're 14%. Um, engine temperature and all that stuff isn't really going to matter. Um, so those are the most critical right there and that'll tell me everything I need to know on why this truck won't start. Um, so let's go ahead and start cranking and see what happens when we crank it. Okay, so Ficum Sync is going to turn to 1 as soon as the Ficum sees top dead center on the crank and cam positioning sensor. Once those two sync together, um, that's why they call it Thickum Sync, it's, everything is syncing into each other. So the, the crank, the cam, and the Thickum knows, like the, the Thickum will know when to fire the injector because it'll know where top dead center is at. So that's your timing. So once it sees timing is good, that'll turn to one. Thickum voltage, we don't want that to drop below 46 volts. I try to keep it above 46, but right now, um, I repaired this Ficum so it's staying where I want it to be. Um, ICP voltage, um, that's within spec there, it's, it's a quarter volt. And ICP pressure, IPR valve percentage, so this is at 14, 15%. So this is going to probably jump up to 80% to build up ICP pressure. Now what you're going to notice is with this truck, the ICP pressure is going to build to above 500 pounds, but the, uh, the truck still won't start. Um, and I'll explain that in a second, but I want you guys to see this first. See, that goes to start to build. But anyways, this will get over 500 pounds. Um, this Ficum Sync went to 1. And um, IPR percentage will drop down once this gets to 500 pounds. But it still won't start. Um, let me see if I can get it to this point. Alright, here we go again. You can hear the fuel pump coming on.
is toast. Anyways, what will happen is when the truck tries to start once it gets to 500 pounds, you'll hear the injectors ticking. Um, it'll sound like the injectors are firing, but they're actually not. What's going on is in the top of the injectors, you have your spool valve up here. Now there's a rod, there's, there's a valve right here that opens and closes. It, that's what these coils are for. That'll let the high pressure oil come in and push the intensifier piston down. And then it will basically have enough pressure to take your fuel that comes in from here and push it down out the nozzle. Um, the, the parts that are inside the, inside the injector itself are stuck. But you can still hear the injector clatter when I key the, the ignition or the uh, turn the key on. So the clatter that you're hearing is this rod that's inside of this, this the spool valve, is going back and forth because of the coils that are right here. So there's one coil here and then there's one coil right here. So it's going back and forth. Tick, 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 tick. That's, what, that's the ticking noise that you guys are hearing. Um, but when it starts to fire... You hear just that ticking noise and not the injector actually firing because the parts that are inside the injector on this truck, on all eight of them, I'm going to suspect because it's when it gets um, gets to 500 pounds and I keep cranking on good batteries, it'll just, it, it, it'll fire, but it won't run. So it just, it's just like a bang, but it's, it doesn't continually keep running. Um, another thing you guys can do if you want to, um, Another way to, to kind of get the truck to run is you can take the, all the water out of the truck and you can fill up the degas bottle with hot water from a hot water heater and that'll kind of free up the parts that are inside the injectors when it gets hot water running through the head and then it will start up. Um, I had one truck that I actually, I, I got it to start that way, but as soon as it's cold, it ain't going to start. Um, so I ended up replacing all the injectors on that one as well. But this is the same case. So everything looks good in the PIDs. Everything is working the way it should be. Um, it's holding ICP pressure. Um, but from what the customers told me, he was he just put these injectors in from another engine that's been sitting. Well, these injectors are junk. So they sat too long, and now they're rusted shut or whatever, so it's not running. Um, another thing that he didn't do is when he put the injectors in, he didn't torque them down to to any torque spec. He just hand tightened, um, which is a big no-no. You really need the crush washer on the bottom of this, okay? This is not, you have to replace these every time you, uh, you put these in the truck. So if you take this crush washer and re uh, if you take the injector out, you have to replace the crush washer, okay? Um, if you don't torque it down to the proper torque specs, this crush washer won't seal and you'll get exhaust blow by. So that's why when this truck is cranking, it kind of sounds like it's missing. But what it's actually doing is it's letting air go by uh, as it's spinning around and not creating enough compression on some of the cylinders that he didn't uh, torque down all the way. So we're going to go ahead and change out all the injectors on this truck and then I'll charge up the batteries and we'll see if it starts.